Hi everyone, and thank you, uh, the family, for for giving me the opportunity to to share some feedback with you tonight. Uh, so, my name is Jean, and uh, so I'm co-founder, CPU, and CTO at uh, of Brigade. Uh, so, what do we do at Brigade? So, Brigade is uh, we connect. Um, enterprises, companies from the hospitality industries with uh, freelancers for uh, short-term missions. So let's say you are a business owner, you have a restaurant, and you need a bartender because uh, the one you have is sick. You can go to, uh, to Brigade, it's a platform. You can uh, create a request saying like, okay, I need a, a bartender for Saturday night. And we will match you with a perfect candidate already vetted because we vet all the profiles ourselves. Uh, and we handle everything from the matching, the invoices, uh, financial transactions, and so on. And on the freelancer side, we provide an ecosystem with a lot of uh, uh, different partnerships, such as uh, health insurance, uh, trainings, free trainings, um, and, and a lot of different partnerships. So tonight, uh, I'm going to speak about my uh, my role at Brigade. What do I do? Why do I do, I do that? Uh, what are the pros and cons? And uh, how do it scale? And, and some more information. Uh, so to give you a bit more of context, uh, I am CPU and CTO, so I'm in charge of four teams, product, tech, data science, and quality. Uh, and all of them are under my scope and purpose. Uh, so today we, we are a, a bit more than 20 people, we will be 30 by the end of the year on these four teams. Uh, and I have like four direct reports. Uh, quick, uh, quickly about my background, uh, so geeking since uh, 30 years old. My parents, they, uh, they offered me my first computer at this age and, uh, and the first thing I've done is uh, uh, I, I fixed the, the Wi-Fi. <laughs> and the Wi-Fi, it was uh, maybe uh, 15 years ago, so you can imagine it was not as easy as now. And they were like, uh, what the fuck have you done? Like, how have you done that? And I said, I don't know, I just check uh, the documentation and uh, I, I found how to fix it. So they quickly understood that I had something with uh, computer science. Uh, then, uh, quickly during my teenage years, I started to, 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 to code, to develop HTML, PHP, JavaScript. And I did my first real life production at 16 years old, and it's still live. I won't, I won't show you this because it's quite shameful, but still. <laughs> uh, then, after I did Epitech as a master degree, uh, I worked in many different startups, uh, mostly B2Cs. Uh, my, my biggest background is mobile. I did a mobile development for, for quite a few years. And I tried to launch different projects uh, prior to Brigade. I always, I, I only worked in startups. I was really close to the entrepreneurship. And I really wanted to, 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 to get from the very ground. Uh, so now let's start uh, about the, the feedback of being a CPU and a, and a CTO. So, well, starting with the pros, uh, so to give you a bit of context, I, I, I quickly became, uh, when we ran Brigade, first I was CTO, and a few months after I, I took the product responsibility, uh, because it was actually extremely efficient. We, we are a, a B2B marketplace, uh, so we are not a B2C very much about UX, so we're, we're very much about automation, process, uh, operations, uh, like that, so it, it, it made sense. Uh, for the CTO to handle the product part because most, most of the product was about to, to make like uh, written processes automated with, the pro like with tech. And so the, the main pros I will say uh, after three, three years and a half of having uh, both hats is uh, it's extremely efficient when you do uh, like a seed stage or, or series A stage uh, because you, 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 you're very powerful about the Pareto law. Uh, you, you know, like uh, the impact on the tech for each each feature and and, uh, and vice versa. Uh, so you you have the ability to split like big features in small iteration because you exactly know how to build them. So it's pretty convenient. Uh, you can find quick wins uh, like on your existing product that can have a strong impact on the business. So as well, it's uh, you know when you don't have a, a lot of money and you, and you start to be as lean as possible. When you have like the two hats and the two uh, knowledge. Uh, it's very, very pr productive, very efficient. And then, uh, because you are the one taking the action of all the quick wins, iteration, and to, to be lean, you can measure quite uh, in an efficient way, like the technical depth, and so you can limit it not to have like a spaghetti code and, and so on. 
Then the, the second pros is, uh, well, it's easy to, to balance the product debt and the technical debt because you're responsible for both of them. This is your, 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 your daily work, your daily responsibility. Uh, so exit the long debate with uh, the product team to, you know, to come and say, now, I know you, you don't quite understand about the technical stuff, but you really need to, to trust me on that. If we don't uh, do this refactoring for a few weeks, uh, it's going to be a, a, a whole mess after and it will be way, way more uh, harmful for the growth of the company than if we do it. Uh, so I'm the one taking the decision and I balance like, okay, well, what, what is the most impactful uh, uh, for the business and the, 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 the biggest risk uh, so I can quickly balance between uh, the technical roadmap and the product roadmap. Uh, and as well, for another thing which is uh, super important when you launch a startup is like the build or buy dilemma. When do I use SaaS? When do I build the feature? I, I invest uh, time and efforts of, of developers into building features. And for that, you, you know, like when we, when we come up with a, with a feature, with something we want to do, uh, it's very easy for, for you to have a rough idea of uh, the, the time it will take to, to build the feature. And uh, so you, you know when it's worth it and when it's not worth it actually to, to develop it. Next, uh, challenges. I'm speaking about challenges. Um, well, the thing is when you have to handle like both responsibilities, very, very fast you can't uh, be impactful on the operation of them. Uh, so you can't be a developer anymore, you can't be a product manager anymore, you can't be a scrum master anymore. So you need to, to first create a team of doers. So you have your first product managers, you have your developers, even lead developers. And quickly, you're, you know, like the, the company is scaling, you're, you're doing next fundraising, you, 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 you come from a, a, a seed round to a Series A, you start to have like five, six, seven, eight developers, and plus uh, some guys on the, on the product as well. Uh, and then after, you, you have to quickly scale the, the management as well with middle management. To give you a rough idea, I did it after one year, one year and a half at Brigade. I, uh, I took a head of engineering. He was managing at first like eight, nine uh, developers. Uh, and actually, I believe it was uh, the, the best decision I made. Uh, the second best one was to have a head of product <laughs> uh, as well to manage like uh, all the execution of, uh, of the product roadmap, management of the product team, uh, hiring as well, and, uh, and to basically deal with all the execution of what we, of what we plan. Uh, but it comes from a cost because obviously when you're in a seed or say a stage you don't have much money uh, so it, it's a balance because as a tech co-founder when you handle both uh, you can be very efficient on, uh, on, uh, on decision you will take uh, but at the same time it, it comes with a cost because you need to, to increase your management team and, and, the, and your doer team as well uh, but actually it's, it's quite nice because uh, you will structure the team like very early in the project uh, so in the meantime you it's, it, it, it can be a, a strength for you when you will want to scale to the to the next stage we did our serie b uh, like three months ago uh, and uh, actually uh, the, the investment firm was quite impressed on how the all the product and tech teams were organized because it was quite mature for for the little money we had so far so it comes with a cost uh, it's a challenge but uh, you have pros and cons it depends on your company and of your, the size of your bank account. Uh, next one, which is uh, not a small one, it's uh, the brain gymnastic on different topics. Uh, because you, you will have to deal with a very different kind of topics. Marketing related, business related, ops related, uh, UX related on the product. Uh, and on the tech, it can be like scalability issues, uh, technical uh, stack choices, um, you know, like a bunch of stuff. So actually, it's uh, it's very you know it can be a, a, a very energy uh, uh, like uh, draining uh, actually to switch from one topic to another. But the good thing is uh, you have a complete overview of all the challenges, internal and external factors of the company. So as well, it makes it easier to have like a global picture and to take uh, like decision for the global organization. Um, so yeah, so basically my, my job at Brigade to give you a better idea is uh, I make the organization scale, basically. Um, I, 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 I'm not developing anymore, I'm not managing developers, I'm not uh, building features, I build roadmaps, I build strategy, I define what are the key topics uh, to do during the, the next two years with the, the fund we raised, but I don't do operation anymore. And my, you know, my, my job is to think like, okay, uh, how the company need to be shaped for the next six months 
and, and, and even after. So my, basically my job is to do that. So it means like being in a lot of conversation every day to, to understand what are the, the, the challenges the team uh, are facing. Uh, because you need to be very much connected with the, uh, with the operation, with the daily operation, not to draft a strategy and roadmap that uh, don't take uh, any of the challenge, like the current challenge of the company that need to be solved. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a completely different way of working, like you can do when you are only CEO or only CPO in a Series B startup, or you can be quite close to the operation again. Me, I, I already uh, went very much on the strategic. <coughs> Sorry. And the strategic layer of the company, so it comes as well with uh, pros and cons. So how does it scale? Uh, because now we are in a Serie B, as I told you, we will be uh, pretty much uh, 30 uh, by the end of the year on the four teams I manage. Uh, so like, how it's going to be in two years? Uh, there is many different scenarios. Actually, I focused on, on two scenarios. Uh, for me, they, they make more sense, but I, as well, it's very personal, and I, I will come on this part la later. Um, so, like the first thing could be like, okay, I, I will just focus on uh, on what I do today as as an even more strategic level. So, only uh, thinking about like what we want to do in the next year, in the next two years. Uh, regarding the vision, regarding the strategy, regarding the fundraising, regarding uh, m and as well, because uh, maybe one day we will have to deal with that kind of stuff too, uh, and the board level, and which is actually quite interesting because in the pros, uh, I said like you, I can be the voice of the of the tech de the department, so meaning product engineer. Uh, data and QA uh, to, to the board meeting because we are a tech company. Inv investors need to, to understand like our challenges, and uh, to be able to have this uh, 360 like uh, view of all the tech side, it can be very uh, impactful for, for 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 the board and to have a, a global strategy that uh, that makes sense for everybody. Uh, so obviously, uh, as a co-founder uh, and, and, and you know you are owner of the vision of the company, it can be very impactful for the for the product and tech and for all the VPs uh, that will be uh, reporting to you. Uh, and yes, you need to have like strong VPs that will be uh, owning each vertical. So one on the tech, one on the product, one on the queue, one on the data. And uh, it as well, it's a good way to step back as a co-founder because. Obviously, as a co-founder, you're here to, to make the company grow. Uh, so you're at different stage. So when you're a CTO, for instance, you start first being like a developer, then lead developers, and uh, engineering manager, then head of engineering, VP engineering, CTO, and one day you will even step back from the CTO position and just to be one of the public figures of the company and works on a very um, high layer topics. Uh, though there is a, a, a direct uh, cons of that is you need to have the critical size uh, so you won't have to over, you, you won't overlap on the VPs because if it's two small teams or, on, or the, even the global company is not big enough, you may overlap on the uh, on the VPs and it doesn't make any sense. So, in order to, to achieve such organization and to to, to be uh, quite uh, useful and efficient for the company, it needs to be uh, big enough. And then second scenario is obviously to split the two roles at some point. Uh, it can be a scenario as well. Uh, and to focus in on, uh, on one of them and to really put all my focus, my effort on that and to be extremely impact, uh, impactful on this one. Uh, it can be as well the uh, opportunity to hire uh, somebody else which is completely uh, a complementary profile for me. Uh, me, I come from with, a, with a, a technical background, so it can make sense to have somebody more on, a, I don't know, like design, data, uh, very UX oriented. Uh, for instance, if I keep the CTO position, or otherwise I can take a CTO like with way more experience than me, and it can be very much complementary depending on the needs of the company. Um, so yeah, and it can be a, it can be a good intermediate step. I mean, like I can still uh, uh, split the, the role, focus on one, and, and when the company will be big enough. To, uh, to hire another C-level that we uh, replaced my uh, last uh, C-level uh, hat. So I can more focus on the high-level strategy of the company as a tech co-founder. Um, but as well, it comes from the cons. Uh, you have less impact on the overall organization because obviously you're focusing on one vertical. Uh, and you still have a risk of misalignment between CPU and CTO. And from uh, what I heard uh, unofficially, let's say, uh, it, ha it happens quite, quite a lot of time. Um, so, other uh, other uh, parts uh, sh should all be a CTO and CTO. 
Uh, actually, it depends on the mindset. Uh, speaking about me, uh, I consider myself, I'm, I'm a generalist. I'm obviously not an, an expert of anything. First, I'm young. Second, uh, you, you can't be an expert of all the, the different fields of your company. So I consider myself as a generalist with a technical background. Uh, so this is why I'm speaking about being a technical co-founder. Uh, so my job is to broadcast the vision uh, to our teams and to scale the organization, basically. Um, and I have one, one of my investors, he, 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 uh, he was co-founder and CTO of uh, Shopzilla. I believe you, you know Shopzilla, it was like Google Shopping before Google Shopping. Uh, he sold, uh, the company has been sold like uh, 500 million uh, dollars as far as I remember in 2005. And, uh, and, I, and I spoke a, a, a lot of time uh, with uh, Henri about what's the role of a CTO and, uh, and does it make sense actually to, to merge with CPO or with another C-level position as well. And he told me like the CTO, the real job of a CTO is not to, to handle like the, uh, the, the execution of the roadmaps, the hiring of developers, he, he doesn't give a shit about that. His role is to really make the company scale, and, uh, and because he has a technical mindset, an engineer background, uh, he will see the whole organization has a system, and he will make it scale. So he, he, he designed that like saying like the company is a network, each people are node, and discussion are APIs, and your role as a CTO is to make this scale. So I found this actually. Uh, picture uh, very interesting and uh, I try always well, in the decision I take and in the, in the mission I assign to myself like okay uh, how can I make it better uh, always to, to have uh, to, to take decision in, in the prism of what he said uh, that I found very relevant uh, and another topic as well is it depends on the project if I do like a, a, I don't know like a, a blockchain uh, the security uh, banking startup or something uh, definitely you need to have a CTO uh, full time on that because the technical changes are way more, uh, way bigger even at the very beginning of the project. Me as a B2B marketplace, I, I don't have a lot of uh, volume to, to handle actually, which is quite, uh, quite good. My main complexity are on the automation side and how to scale the organization, so it does make sense to, to actually um, have the, the, the product responsibility as well. So yes, the main challenges are having a, a UX, a, a good enough UX, so uh, all of users can be uh, autonomous in the platform. Because uh, when you have restaurant, owner, uh, restaurant owners, is they go from uh, 20 years old to uh, 65. Uh, so you need to have a, a, a single interface that fits all needs and, and cultural difference and stuff. Uh, a lot of automation and data science. So every, all of that is very much related on, with the product responsibilities. Uh, so yes, um, once again, it, it really depends of, uh, of, of your product. And then another thing is, um, so my belief is, I, I think like more and more in the next years, uh, CTO won't be only CTO anymore, it will be either like CPU in CTO, COO in CTO, and, and some other stuff. Because actually, it's way easier to build and run software than it used to be before. Uh, when I spoke with Henri about like, uh, tell me more about the tech side at Shopzilla, and uh, he was doing like, uh, he created his own database system. So it's very much like, he created his own infrastructure. Amazon Web Services didn't exist. PostgreSQL, it was the very beginning. So you had really to do like research and development. To, to, to be an enabler of the business, of the scalability of the business. Right now, we, we, we all use like AWS, Google Cloud, uh, Azure, we use uh, Twilio, Stripe, and a bunch of other services that make it easier to, to, to build and run a business. And, and, and these services, they do scale, they do scale a lot. So, so basically, you know, like when, you're, when you're building your tech stack, you have to focus on, uh, on the core values of your business. Uh, but that won't be that much compared to what you had to create like 10 years ago. Uh, so this is why I believe more and more and with uh, technologies evolving and being more scalable, easier to handle, uh, more drag and drop uh, kind of, uh, at least in the early stage of the startup it will be way more easier uh, on, the, on the tech side. So that's pretty much about it. I hope you enjoyed, uh, you enjoyed uh, this talk. Uh, I will be glad to, to talk about that. Here is my email address. Uh, so feel free to send me an email and, to, and I will be glad to answer your questions. Thank you very much.
who has a question? Who starts? Okay, uh, this is a microphone that you can throw to other people, so feel free, it's soft, don't worry. It won't hurt anybody, All right? You start? Hello, Jean, and thank you for, uh, for your talk. And uh, I, would, I would like to know your relationship with the C CSO. I don't know if you have a sales as a co-founder uh, or something in the VP side. And uh, how, do you, well, how do you manage the roadmap as a CTO and CPO talking to the sales? Um, okay, it's a good question actually. Um, well, we have a, a COO, so in charge of operation, so he's in charge of the uh, expansion, so sales, obviously, on, two, on the two sides, uh, on the freelancer side and on the, on the business side as well, uh, marketing and uh, customer care. So he really handles all the operation and expansion. Um, so actually, we quite connected uh, because as I told you, most of the features we develop for Brigade will be how we, you know, like we, we, we make the product scale as a, the, the operation scale, opening new countries, uh, more automation for key accounts, uh, better workflows for the payment because the payment is hell of a piece of work. Um, so yeah, obviously it's, it's quite linked. Um, so to give you a, a very um, good example, uh, what, I, what I do every time is, um, so we have the vision of the company, the vision of the product, we have the strategy uh, of, uh, on the operation side. So I, def I, I, I will define, so when I will build my, my budget for the next year, plus the roadmaps, um, I will just define what are the key topics we need to tackle in order not to be a bottleneck for the growth of the company. Uh, so it can be okay, you need to, uh, I don't know, work on the internationalization because we want to launch uh, Germany or Spain. Okay, good one. Uh, we need to scale the uh, CRM for the sales team. Okay, good one as well. Uh, and I will put like all the strategical topics uh, that, that, that need for the operation as well for the product vision and for the company vision as well as uh, key topics to handle. After that, I will just add a, a rough estimate of 50% uh, bandwidth more on my HR plan so I can handle uh, some other product stuff that will come bottom up from users, feedback, product managers, new iteration, quick wins, and so on. Um, so this is how I work. It's just we define the key topics together with, all, with the whole team and after we, we build the budget on top of that. Okay, thank you. Hi, thanks for the talk. So generally in, um, in companies you usually have uh, the most common scenario is that you have like one CTO and one CPO and being the CTO of, uh, and the CPO of a company does Aren't you like biased when you kind of try to develop new products because you have a technical background and you're like, oh, maybe this is not doable because I know that it's not doable. Well, if you're in a company where you have a, another uh, separate CPO, they're like, we want this. And then the CTO tries to say, okay, we, we want to find something to do. Uh, well, I don't take decision alone. <laughs> I have a product team. Uh, so they are in charge of finding solutions. Uh, you know, like, Maybe I didn't speak enough about that in the presentation, but um, like because I, you, you handle a bunch of different topics, I do a lot of bottom-up. But my main responsibility is to make sure we, we won't lose time, we will be efficient, we will take the right decision at the right time for the company. Um, so yeah, of course, you, you can imagine that it's uh, some kind of BA because uh, you're a tech guy at heart. Uh, this is your background, so maybe you won't take the good decisions for the product. But, uh, you know, again, I, so, you know, you have to be data-driven, you have to take creative feedback, you have to uh, try a lot of things to make iteration, A-B testing, and so on, uh, to, to actually make the right decision. It doesn't come just like that. Do I, am I taking the right decision or no? No, you're having assumptions, and you need to try all of them. And uh, this is what we do with the product team. But uh, uh, with the tech side, I'm like, okay, I know the impact on the tech side. I know about the technical refactoring we need for that. I know uh, if it's a quick win or if it's a long thing to do. Um, and again, we, we are a business of automation. So, you know, automating processes, it's mainly technical. Quick question, do you still code? No. Uh, or is it just a, a chest party for you? Like. Uh, that's a good one. Um, no, I don't code. Um, I, I did on, a, on, on not on core business stuff uh, because uh, I don't want to be a bottleneck. 
Uh, that's it. If I have to ship something for a feature and because I don't have time, uh, so I don't got 0% uh, of my time. Uh, I can do some uh, DevOps stuff uh, sometimes, or you know, like uh, I did something for the UK on the payment side, for instance. I connect uh, another API; it makes life easier of the uh, of the ops in the UK, and they are still using this script for one year now. So it's kind of a pro to have shitty code in production running every day. Uh, <laughs> but otherwise, no, I, I don't code anymore. And do you regret it? No, because um, yes, it's very personal again. Um, when I when I took the decision to to do a, a, a computer science engineering school, um, I, I was hesitating between like doing business school with entrepreneurship track or, or going to to to, to uh, engineering school because I loved both. And in my mind, I was like, okay, better start with the hard skill and then you will come back with the soft skills later. So this is why I always work in startup because I didn't want to be you know in a big technical team and you just work on a very scoped. Uh, stuff and basically you you will do this for many years. I really wanted to be as close of, uh, as possible of the entrepreneurship stuff. Um, so no, I have no regrets because I mainly I consider myself like as an entrepreneur before being a CTO either a CPO. But I have a technical background, so I can handle these responsibilities and, and build the, the the needed team with the VPs, uh, developers, designer, product and stuff uh, for the needs of the company. Thank you. I can yeah, you can throw it. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, you said you set up uh, middle management, and as a CTO and CPO, you have to share the vision. And what did you do, and what was your biggest challenge? You, you mean like uh, with my managers? Yeah. Um, to, to make them autonomous. Okay, well. Um, but first, you do a reporting quite often, so you know you. you it's not like they, they, they are completely autonomous, and we just say hi every six months and how things are going. It, we 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 build together a strategy. Uh, I really comes with like, okay, guys, these are the strategical needs for the company for the next fundraising, or for the next two years, or for for, for some kind of decision. Um, and after we we build together stuff. Um, so I come with the. Uh, um, vision of the company, vision of the product, uh, technical vision, not that much because we don't have a, a very, you know, like a, a complex and new technical vision. Um, and after we, we build from that. Does it answer to your question or not that much? Um, maybe more about process you set up. Okay. Um, can you be more specific? <laughs> Because they couldn't sell a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, well, you have to, I think, um, when you are CTO and, and uh, CPO, um, you have to share your vision to the team uh, to make them so autonomous because you have to think and, uh, yeah, you have to think about other things that like production, etc and uh, how you made your uh, team go to zero to one? Um, okay, so what, what we do is um, uh, actually I, I draft uh, not a roadmap because I don't build the, the proper roadmap because a roadmap is a mix of top-down strategical stuff and bottom-up coming from the teams. Uh, but I, I do define the strategical topics, and, uh, and strategical topics uh, are come from the, the vision of the company, of the product, uh, of the strategy for this fundraising, and the next one. Uh, so this is how I, I share the vision, if you want. Um, and, and, and of course, I, I, I do share the vision. We, we speak about that. We have some materials about that, about what we want to build in the next three, five years. We work with OKRs as well, which is a, a very common framework. Uh, to define objective key results, uh, which is quite uh, effic uh, efficient, and we, do, we, we don't do this only for the product and tech team, but for the whole company. It's, and we have uh, very clear KPIs, quantitative or qualitative objective, but very clear and, and achievable. Thanks. Hello. I had a quick question. How do you handle the rhythm? Um, do your scrum is what one, two, three weeks, and then how do you, do you have a roadmap on a quarterly basis? Uh, uh, one, one more rhythm. time. 
Vision of the company. Uh, yeah, okay. uh, how do you basically, yeah. because you, you uh, short term, mid term, long term, how do you do that? Mm. Uh, the, okay, so um, we do a kind of vision of the next two years uh, that we, we work with my uh, um, partner and with other C level as well. Uh, that we kind of sell to the to, to the investment firm, uh, and as well after we do a cares on the, on a on a semester uh, basis. Uh, so this is how we work. So basically, what we do is uh, we we draft like okay uh, the, the the strategy for the next two years. Every semester we we build a cares, and uh, for these cares we we come with a product and technical roadmap ba based on the need. It's a long term vision, six months for technical team now. Not that much, to be honest. When you have a, a code base with a uh, hundred or thousands of uh, lines of code, uh, I can tell you that any kind of refactoring we do on the back end, it will take between six and one year, six months and one year. Uh, if you need to, I don't know, like uh, if you want to split uh, services into microservices, uh, if you want to, I don't know, like uh, change some ki kind of technologies, um, it's actually it's not. Uh, when you're bootstrapping the the the, the uh, it's it's what I'm saying is accurate for a series B and plus. When you do seed and series, of course, you will have like less uh, um, vision of what you want to build because you're still in the process of, of st testing stuff. Uh, but when you already have stuff running and you need to, you know, to make your, your, your code base more mature and to go to the next stage of uh, industrialization, for instance, uh, you, you will just, um, you know, it, it will take more time. Last one. Hi. Um, do you still uh, made a um, technical survey? Do you have time to, 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 to do you schedule some time to to uh, to see what's new techno new technology or so? Um, so a uh, quick uh, a quick comment on the on our tech stack. We do uh, React Native and React JS uh, in the single repository. We share codes of the logic behind the components uh, from the mobile application and the and website, which is super efficient. To be honest, it, it took us a lot of investment, uh, technical investment, but I, I really wanted to to invest time on that. And on the back end, we do um, uh, services. I won't say microservices because it's more services, uh, not GS and not WS with Docker. So we can have a, 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 a both like modern and easy to use stack. Uh, again, we don't have like a huge volume to handle. Um, so, you know, it, it works pretty much good like that. And PostgreSQL on the, on the database layer. Uh, so yes, I, I, I do, uh, I, sometimes I do, uh, I do check online what are the news, especially on uh, Lambda, the serverless, uh, and all the technologies on the front end as well. Um, but, you know, to be honest, uh, I start to be less and less interested by uh, hype technologies, and I'm more focused on scaling technologies. To be honest, uh, if, I, if I had to, to, to build Brigade today, I believe I want technologies, but more PHP or Java. <laughs> but it can be another talk. <laughs>